everybody, Dorian here, and today we are playing Dream, Dream Daddy. We're playing Dream Daddy. Um, a daddy simulator dating sim game where you, you, you date, you date, you date daddies. Amanda says dad. Hmm. But it looks like daddy is asleep. I gotta stop saying daddy. Dad, wake up. Wake up. Pretend to be dead. Pretend to be dead. Do I get to be the daddy dating other daddies or is it a girl dating daddies? I, I'm not quite sure on the logistics of this yet. Uh, I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. What am I, a dog? I, I would do that. Amanda shakes me. Dad, no, please. This is some fucking Lion King shit where he's just laying on the ground. She's like, Dad, wake up. Daddy, come on, Dad. This hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda. This is the end for me. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath to you all. I love that already. We're just we're just going hard with the dad jokes. Like we're just going hard with with the dad jokes because this is awesome. Um, Amanda, I bequeath to you all my earthly possessions. Spread my ashes over my, recl my recliner. Okay, well your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. <sighs> I'm gonna assume this is Amanda. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and I stretch. What a nice box this was. Uh, morning, Manda Panda. Ugh. Yikes. Dad, breathe. Go brush your teeth. Uh, don't tell your dad what to do. I am your father and I will not brush Real my teeth if I don't dad. want to. Okay. So I am a dad. I am a dad who's, who's wanting to fuck other dads. Please tell me there's a fro in here. Please tell me there's a fro. Oh, come on, give me a fro, give me a fro, give me a fro! Yes! Oh, this shit's gonna be beautiful. This shit's gonna be... For those of you guys who watch my streams regularly, you already know which direction I'm going with this. You already know which, which direction I'm going. Ah! Uh. I think I think you guys have an idea. Well, we could give him little kawaii eyes. No, okay. Let's give him. Or what are we looking at here? Hard eyes? No, 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 no. Okay. Ah, uh, no. Oh, fucking lion oh shit. Okay. Ah, uh, those are some big old, those are some big old eyes. Little Vegeta eyes too. Ah, uh, no. I I kind of want to go with these. I kind of want to go with kawaii eyes. All right, so we got kawaii eyed. Uh, head. Head shape. What head shapes do we have? That's that's probably the best one. Super chiseled kawaii eyed. Super chiseled kawaii eyed Bob Ross. That's what we're making here, guys. That's what we're fucking making. All right, let's let's find a let's find a good nose for Bob Ross. I don't know what Bob Ross's nose actually looks like. That looks about right, but uh, mm, we'll go with that one. Okay, uh, mouths. He's a very happy person. He's very happy when he's painting. That that lip would look pretty good, I think. But no, no, no. Well, oh, I like I like that one. I like that one. Okay. Ah, the little tongue. Um. Uh, mm, so edgy. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, the brows. They gotta be thick, man. They gotta be thick, and they gotta be the right color. So, go with some. But I want them to be nice. I want them to be sweet eyes. I want I want people to look at the eyes and feel warm. There we go. Some nice bushy brow. Uh, he doesn't get no facial hair because it's Bob Ross. Uh, glasses. Did Bob Ross have glasses? I can't remember. Yeah, he didn't have glasses. He did have a beard. Sorry, Bob Ross did have a beard. I totally, totally did that wrong. Let's see if we can get get a Bob Ross beard going. Um, it was more full. It was more full. Uh, that's a little bit closer. No, no. All right, we're gonna go with. Fuck. <laughs> that just that just doesn't look right. That's too much. Fuck. Can't there be something in the middle of this and nothing? All right, we'll go with that. Ah, oh, it's too much. It's too much. We'll just give him a little mustache. How about that? Uh, piercings? Give Bob Ross fucking... Give him a fucking piercing. No, we're good. Man, I would make such a different daddy if I was playing this by myself. All right, Bob Ross. He's a simple man. He was a simple man. This is this is probably what he would just wear. Just, you know, something simple and nice. 
It's invincible and ice. Looking good. Looking good, daddy. Name All right. Dad. First name, daddy. Last name, Ross. Daddy Ross, that's his name. Be that dad. Hey, be I'm gonna, that dad. yeah, I'm gonna be Daddy Ross. Daddy fucking Ross. Bob Ross has been lonely with his daughter Amanda and he's needing to find some companionship. Did you fall asleep packing? <laughs> I love it so much. I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. I love my name is literally just daddy. Wait Straggler what's in it looking into the box? I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Well, I haven't seen those in years, bro uh, I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it There she is with some some kick-ass shades That's the coolest baby I've ever seen and now look at you. I mean you don't look not cool, but ah uh, uh, Oh Okay I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna start off straight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna discover my love of men during this game. Not. Not for real. I'm. I'm I mean, it'd be weird if this made me like. Like realize. Never mind. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whatever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Halloween when you were maybe four. <laughs> Oh my god, that dragon costume! Yeah, mm hmm mm hmm You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess dragon. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside of a dragon's mouth was the realization of your greatest fear, I think. Huh, I guess that makes some, makes some sense. And this, this was you in your horse face. Look at that cowgirl, Go grow up. It'd be all like, yeehaw! I believed you named that plush horse, Sir Horsington the Brave. Uh -huh. That's a very good name. I don't think that was his, uh, Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms because Daddy Ross is buff! Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Uh, go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. He was in a ska band. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Hey, man, ska's still cool. The Scommunist Manifesto had a chance back in the day. The Scommunist Manifesto. That is so fucking edgy, guys. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. I mean, you got you can't have a ska band without a horn section. Uh, hey, it's Emma P. Aww. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I never stop mix. I'll never stop mixing up those two. Dad. Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it like a little bit of effort. Oh, right. Emma P was the one who uh, tried to steal people's pets. Fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station. Booped her pants during sleepover. I like uh, tennis ball at the police station. Lighter fluid. Tennis ball. Tennis racket. Right. <laughs> Dad, that was you. Oh, <laughs> sounds like me. All oh, right, I was a wild child. Me and me and the scommunist manifesto. Like we would just go out and we would we would say fuck the system and shoot tennis balls at the police stations. Uh, I was six when you did it. Okay, Amanda, I wasn't aiming at the police station. It just happened that there was a police station in the vicinity where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Okay. <sighs> Dude, I actually kind of want to do that. Can we please light some tennis balls on fire and like just. Just fucking hit them back and forth. I'll play tennis with flaming tennis balls. That would be just douse it in like some Vaseline so it burns really slow, and then some oil, uh, like some lighter fluid, and light it on fire and just fucking play tennis with it. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police, who probably thought you were trying to throw like a Molotov cocktail at them or something. Why would they believe you? Ah. Anyway, I gotta show this to MR later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photo photography award you ever won. Oh, she's a photographer. Nice. Yeah, and they got us $20 gift card to McFridays. So they just combined right. Fridays and, and McDonald's. And then you got food poisoning from Cheesy Toes Tata Blats. Blast. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Ugh. Dad, come on. Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box to pull us out one last mm -hmm. photo. I love you. Amanda. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. <sighs> but I decided to break the silence. That was the day you were born. This is the day we adopted you. 
This is the day you were born. You're, I'm your real dad. It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right there in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender, but of course I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh man. She holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes. The calmest I've ever seen her, she says. It's okay. It's gonna be... It's all gonna be okay. That was sweet. She was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer, maybe too long. I miss her. Can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Come on, Pops, we gotta finish packing. The moving in won't wait forever. So how long have I been a single dad for? Oh, we're in the car, cool. Some, some nice music. Um, Amanda and I pile into the car, take one last look at the old house. Some MM memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Mm. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. <laughs> remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? <laughs> uh, you're a very imaginative child. Yeah. Hey, remember when I broke the back window? <laughs> we get it, made it. You break, you break, you break shit. Ah. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Let's hope not, but memories to make, stuff oh. to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it sings, stings a little bit to leave it behind. Now I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away, and the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear to the rear view mirror. So, so what? Huh? So sell me on your cool new pad, bro, dad, daddy Ross. Uh, I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. <clears throat> Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Ma Maple Bay, our new house features washer and dryer hookups. Honey, have you ever had dirty clothes? For most of my life, yes. Uh, well, worry about that no longer as our new place features mechanizations mach that will not only clean your clothes, but dry them directly mm. thereafter. And that uh, upper class luxury, I fear. Do we now have washers? The concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of fat cats upstairs, sweetie. Uh, anyway, it's also smaller than our last home. A uh, cozier one, might argue. Good spin. Yes. I think it's great. Won't be closer to a lot of stuff that we can walk to, so I don't have to waste gas. And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn to parallel park at some point, huh? right? All right. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their oh. attitude. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty mm -hmm. quiet. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn. Uh, you are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Ah. Practically dust. Uh, yeah, you're a oh. real, uh, don't you dare. Senior. Ah. Ha! Ha! I'm just gonna oh. ignore that, but I won't forget it. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. Still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to do grocery shopping. Mm. Man, this is a lot of this is a lot of buildup, isn't it? Bob, school your jets. You have to promise me we're gonna take a break and explore our neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area or something. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown, and the for sale sign is still in the yard. Hiya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more! Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority. Yeah, so did your old man. Fuck commu- or fuck capitalism. It's all about the ska- Scommunist manifesto. I can't get over- I can't get over that. All that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. We need some coffee, ASAP. I gotta get my hands on a nice hot cup of the old bean juice, if you know what I mean. Or I'm just gonna be useless all day. Um, I think we passed the coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it. All right, let's go to the coffee shop, guys. Vroom, 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 vroom. We walk down the street to the coffee spoon. A cute little place on the corner. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? This is me. This man, this Bob Ross daddy is me. At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't gonna come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table but he's very much within my personal mm. zone. And what's with the etiquette when you have a dirty bug? Is there a bin? Do you go sell it, set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there? 
and feel your face flush hot shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact been somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda, I have social anxiety. Don't judge me. We walk inside and look, daddy number one pops up. Wow, look at that. Look at Lucio. He's grown so big. Uh, the inside of the copper shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls, and patrons lounge around on, well, worn and couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Uh, I'm gonna play some ska music here. See, he looks like her daddy. Like, they got the same fucking grin and everything. Well, he doesn't have freckles, but... Is that a hereditary? I don't know. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Oh. It's, uh... It's kinda dumb. It gets me mentioned in the poem, I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. I like this guy. This this dude, this dude's cool. He seems pretty good. And, and fucking Bob Ross Senpai, look at his eyes. He, he's in love. He's in love. He's seen, he's seen the face of God, and it is Matt. So what will it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and I am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a... Uh, I, I don't like chai as much as some people do. Ice, Tegan, and Sarah. Ah, uh, they're all puns! Ah, they're all puns! Die, Antwood! Uh, Tegan and Sarah. Godspeed you. Oh, dude, that's brilliant. I'm gonna go with Ice, Tegan, and Sarah. Oh, shit, he liked that. Okay. Okay, I don't get it. It's a band. Tegan and Sarah are this really awesome Canadian indie band formed in 1995. They were nominated for a Grammy in 2013 and are known for being masters of not only pop hits but measuring. Okay, Wikipedia. All right, I'm doing the thing again. Yeah, a little bit, but coming right up. And for you, I'll have a macchiato de Marco, please. Coming right up. Do you want that small, medium, or biggie smalls? That is brilliant. I fucking love that. I fucking love it. Uh, medium. Medium, please. Wait, he's big, he's small, he's big or small? He's big. Big, he's small is definitely big. I should change that, shouldn't I? It's a little dated. It's a little dated. Not a lot of people. Not everybody's gonna remember what Biggie Smalls looked like. Uh, Dad sets to make our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. The cooler bands than you listen to, anyways. I mean, I mean, we make a lot of puns. We can't really judge. Hey, hey. Scott was cool once. I mean, I think it's still cool. Like, fucking, like, I fucking love Ska. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch. But it's all right. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Uh, okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. A little matchmaking daughter over here. No, I don't, I don't know. I love that we're playing a dating sim where you're not, like... You're not either some perverted kid trying to fuck a bunch of women, but you're also not like some young person like who's like inexperienced. Like we're 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 like a full grown dad. We're like a full grown dad. Our daughter's in her like fucking twenties. Like this is like a whole new dimension. It's like a whole new dynamic we haven't seen before. Uh, come on. What do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I'm always inside and I don't go and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. Huh. See, we're making progress. Matt sets her drinks down on her table, and I have a sip. The ice teagle in Vera is delicious. Hi, we're near the neighborhood. I'm a man, and this is my dad. Daddy. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop, and you two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. You know what? Let me get you guys' opinion on something. Matt goes to the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. We're got a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're gonna have a taste test at first, so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, you know, really appreciate the flavor sensations of uh, the banana bread. Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give it that nana bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. I was just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. <laughs> Right, yes, that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I knew that. Matt serves us each piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing! Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. Wow, who would have thought? 
Who would have thought? So, any ideas? Because I'm stumped. Well, I think I might not only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread Kennedys? That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Grateful banana bread? No. Right said ban banana bread Kennedys. You know, like the punk band, Dead Kennedys. I thought you said you only knew dad band puns. I'm a hard dad. That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Yeah, banana bread Kennedy. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Yeah, maybe. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Oh, man, we're already starting. All right, let's get into it. See, I thought it sounded good when I when you said it. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. Is that Mr. Wayne over there? I hastily look away, hoping you didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. No, you take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? I need a nap after all that banana bread and coffee. Have you ever known me to play by the rules? Your father's a rebel, sweetie. Now I'll board the train and sleep your time. Chug shit! I always love to have some coffee before I go to sleep. Why I don't sleep. As we're walking home, I hear footsteps coming up behind us. Potentially, there's someone who's going to try and uh, attack us. I like the little army jacket she's got on, though. Daddy, bro! You turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Wait, do I know this? Do I know this, daddy? I think, I think he has a very cute child. I think his child is very adorable with those big old bugger eyes. Look at him, look at a little bugger. Oh, Craig, what's up? Bro, bro. Oh. Holy wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Wait, do we know each other? It's been, why is he moaning? Why is he moaning? All he did was see Craig. He didn't even do anything to Craig. He's just seen him. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Man, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. We might have experimented from time to time. Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Aw, oh, thank you. Last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. That's so cute. That's so cute. Are you babysitting? Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to the exams and bad hangovers. The next, we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Well, I was working out in California. Just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How smashily doing. Oh, I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. I... But they used to smash a lot. Uh, she actually still goes by Smashly, which is stupid. And uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, damn. Well, I guess we'll just have to learn the intricacies of guy love together. Uh, it's all news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic, bruh. Uh, twins, you have three kids? Ain't life something, bro, right? So, Keg Stan Craig is the father of three. Wow. Keg Stan Craig, he must have done a lot of Keg Stans back in the day, man. Oh, haha, yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. No, I, I, we got that. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and drink from the keg. Right, yeah, no, she probably knows. She's very good at it. Ah, oh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really got to keep my heart rate. Uh, brought River along for, you know, resistance training. Sure, sure, that's a thing. Uh, you jog daily. I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promised myself that I'm going to jog... Daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. We could both be ripped. No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Come on, it'll be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. Oh, man, they used to have a thing. They had bro brunches back in the good old days. Uh, great, let's get that thing going soon. Um, I better get moving, though. Good to see you guys. All right, Craig, you have a good one. You have a good one, Craig. I'll see you later, bruh. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be reasonable, responsible for any living thing, including, and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. That sounds scary. Man, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it. Like it was the thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing. He said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, he's out wrong. He's out wrong. 
Uh, he jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, better get home. Hope I don't reflect on how old I am you later. I don't know why I did that voice. That was really weird. All right, so now we're at the house, and there's a cool little duck. We already, like, decorated the whole place. That was fast. Amanda had to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she could sit. Too bad we're going to have to be putting my stuff back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. I don't want to think about you leaving. It's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. I'll come visit you, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major, so I'm going to be taking tons of pictures. Uh, you promise? Of course. Are you going to be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog? Forget art school. I'll stay. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? I'll buy a dog right now. I'll just fucking get it. Medium-sized dog. Can't shake him around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog's a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> That's true. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Let's see if you got into any of them. She pulls out one and throws the rest back on the floor. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. All right, I'm sure she got in. It's just an envelope. Yeah, it's just like my entire future, not a big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips open the, rips it open with her teeth. We have uh, a letter opener, but all right. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? What does it say, baby? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, her face drops. I regret to inform you that we are unable to offer your admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. That sucks. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. I'm sorry. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I should have put that experimental stuff on my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Why go to a school if it doesn't fit your art style? Hmm. You know. Her face is the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and MRP are sleeping over tonight. So, you know. All right, cool. You need me out of the way because it's painfully uncool. Uh, I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes, man, this is... Where do we get to the daddies? Uh... Well, have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Uh, quick, think of plan. Oh, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is. And Amanda still doesn't show me how to GPS on my phone, so I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. All right, let's go this way. Okay, cool. We're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really, in this distance, could it be? Could it be a bar? A big burned down neon sign hangs above a di tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, it'll have to do. A bar is small and dimly lit. The cracks of pool are sound in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if it's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. I man, I drink. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold brew. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste of my Miller Light. And, uh, don't have any boys to crack it open with, but, you know, someday. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh, uh, okay. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. So I could have it. My team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favored team hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing sports team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Hello, a middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass settles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. She wears a cross, yet looks like she's has an eight in, in many a night. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Sister Mary. Come here often? Does this happen? This doesn't happen. Girls don't just come up to you at a bar. Uh, no. Actually, I just moved to this part of town. I'm Daddy, by the way. Hey. Are you watching the game? Yes, my preferred team is in the lead. Imagine if people actually talked like this. I, I, I kind of want to do it. My preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. 
Oh, I love that team also. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. What? I mean, do you know your way around balls, Mary? Do you? Do you? Uh, buy a gal a drink? I thought this was all about dating dads. All right, let's see how far we can get with Mary. I almost reluctantly signaled the bartender to order Mary another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She sips a glass at me. Suppose I gotta keep you company now. So, what do you want to know? What's the latest gossip around here? You came to the right broad. Oh, I know. You're trashy and drunk. You're the easiest person to ask about gossip. Mm. I'm an observer. I watch people. I see everything. Know everything. Nothing gets past me. All right, Sauron. Uh, so, so what? I thought you were gonna, you know, mm. tell me about some gossip. Uh, about the gossip, you said nothing gets past you. Oh, right. I'm also still trapped. Confidential to a fault. Mm. What else can you tell me about this part of town? It's quiet, that's for sure. If you want an idyllic little life with white picket fences, this is the place to do it. But every town has its secrets, you know. That sounds ominous. She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans closer. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh, boy. Uh, maybe some other time? Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. Happily watching the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than what I am comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other sports team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. You go, team. It's Brooding Man from the Coffee Spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. So fucking edgy, dude. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different sports teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. Is this how it actually works? Is this how sportsing happens? That's where you're wrong, since it's, as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is closed, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a spectacle glass to the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us. Based on mutual love for the game, he motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, Robert. I'm daddy. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim and Kim who runs this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. I wish we could, just, we could just take Neil and make a bunch of other little baby Neils. And those baby Neils would grow up into, into big Neils, like little teenager Neils. And then those teenager Neils would grow up into like adult Neils. And they'd all be bartenders. And they would all open up little shady bars. And they would all play the game on their televisions. You a whiskey fellow or a beer fellow? Beer, but I'll drink most things. That's what she said. Uh, or I guess in this case, that's what he said. Uh, you like shots? Uh, I like shots. They're all right. Thank you. Robert nods Neil, who serves with two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I tried my hardest to look tough. That's what the stro's for. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, daddy, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his rugged good looks. Your face is good. Thanks? Wait, I think this is what flirting is. Oops, that's an accident. This Man, this guy's mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight, daddy? Not like forever. She was having to sleep over with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Huh. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Okay, never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha, huh, I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You headed my way? I guess? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in the cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. Don't kiss and tell, Daddy. So are we doing this or what? What? Well, that escalated quickly. It's zero to 100 real quick, Daddy. 
You know, do you want to come inside or not? Oh, okay. A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Oh, shit. What? No. No, we can't bang a daddy right off the bat. We, we're... There's no way we're able to just bang out a daddy in the first hour of the game. Like, we just started this. We just met this motherfucker at a bar. I, I mean, I, I, got, I got a daughter. I'm a family man. I don't know if I'm this kind of guy, you know. I'm Bob Ross. I'm Daddy Ross. I don't know if this is the kind of thing I would do. I don't want to say no thank you because that's the whole point of this game is to have sex with dad. So I guess we'll lay it on smooth. Well, I don't... Wait, that didn't mean yes. Wait. For real? Oh god, this is actually happening. Oh man, this is actually happening. Oh fuck, okay. I follow him up to his door, he fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hands. Oh shit, this is happening. Oh man. Oh man. This is not what I... I mean, it's, I'm not gonna say it's not partly what I expected, but I thought this would be like the neutral answer. It would just be like, oh ha, flirty, and I walk away. Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs. Do I have to read all this out loud? And into what I assume is his bedroom. But it's so dark, I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. Ah! He kisses me again. I hear him shucking off his jacket. I am in the middle of my house shouting. I am in the middle of my house shouting this yaoi at the top of my lungs because the music's really loud and everyone else is going to be like, what the fuck is he doing? I clumsily take off mine too. His hands roam down my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't mean to be rude. I just, I don't, I don't watch Yaoi. Or I don't read Yaoi, so this is new to me. And I know I got, I got to get through this. I got to get through this because it's the game and I got to play it for you guys. And I am not like upset or disgusted or anything like that. It's just new experience for me, guys. It's just new. It's just new. I feel the need to defend myself. If I, if I make, if I make sounds that sound rude, I am sorry. I do not mean it that way. It is just very new for me. This is new for me. I don't know how to handle it. I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? Okay, so, I mean, let's just go whole hog. Let's just go whole hog. Let's just go whole hog. No. Good. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Wait, what? It's cutting out. Okay, I was like, is this gonna be like Honey Pop, where I have to play some some fucking arcade game while the dude moans in my ear? Uh, sunlight streams in between the slats and the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house or my new house. And why does my butt hurt so bad? Why does my mouth taste like semen? Uh, I mean, oh right, I look around for Robert, but find myself alone. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. You should go. Okay. Well, I'll uh, talk to you later. Mm. Robert cracks a smile. Sure. He closed her over there. Mm. This is very typical one night stand, man. I thought we had something special here. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home and I suddenly remember Amanda! I rush back home and throw the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda! Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Ah, oh, man, I was kind of hoping he had gone kidnapped and was going to have to come rescue you. Okay. No, I, uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over his place. Where's the Emmas? They left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? Yeah, we watched some movies, ate some snacks, stole a car, you know, the usual sleepover stuff. You teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Uh, yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Yeah, that's why your head's throbbing. Amanda, your loving father may have overdone it last night. Oh, somebody's song over. Father of the year, you wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or anything. Got just the thing. Hang on. So I'm just gonna cut off here. Um, we got to bang one of the... We got to bang one of the daddies already. So I guess mission accomplished for episode one, right? Um, I will say Robert is my least favorite. So I have all the ones to have sex with at, off the bat. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that it was him. He took my, he took my butt cherry. But, you know, my favorite so far is either the coffee dude, Matt, or, um, or Craig. Because they both seem pretty chill. But anyways, thank you guys all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you all in my next video. 
All right. Goodbye. Later. <laughs>